Chris the Bergeron Zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hi, and uh, thanks for coming today to the first uh, Elder Law Seminar uh, that I'm doing here at Sherbin Commons in Nantucket. My name is Art Bergeron. Uh, you may have seen me before. I'm an Elder Law Attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, that's a fairly large law firm in central Massachusetts. There are 55 of us. I am the Elder Lawyer. Uh, not just the old lawyer, I am the person that does Elder Law there. Uh, there are various people that, there that do various other things. And I'm delighted to be here at Sherbin Commons with my friend Chuck Gifford, uh, who had come to some of the presentations that I had done at the Salt Marsh earlier. Uh, and one of the things that I talked about when I was there um, was about assisted living, because I was talking in a very specific context there. I was talking about assisted living and what it is and what certain people, what for certain people it may be an appropriate place to go and a safe place to go. And when I was talking about then, is I was talking about my friends Frank and Mary. Frank and Mary are my pretend couple um, that I always use as illustrations, um, although they feel like they're real. I've been doing them for so many years. Uh, Frank and Mary um, have assets that are worth about $950,000. That's because they're now living here in Nantucket, so their home is worth more than it is when it's on the mainland. Uh, their house is worth about $600,000. They have, Frank has an IRA worth a couple hundred thousand. They have an annuity and bank accounts worth another 150. They have incomes. Frank's income is about $2,000 uh, a month. Uh, and he gets that from uh, a piece of it from Social Security and uh, a piece of it from a pension. Uh, Mary's income is about $1,000 a month. So they're making a total of $3,000 a month. Their house is paid for. They've got some cash in the bank. They are going to be safe as long as they don't ser suffer any serious medical problems. And their goal in life, basically, oh, by the way, they have three children, uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., uh, who all live away. Uh, uh, Peter is now living in New York City. He's got a very good job with he and his wife. And Paul lives in San Diego with his family. And Mary is a single parent. She lives outside of uh, off, off Island in uh, Massachusetts. We're going to be talking about Peter a little bit more later on. But their goal, basically, is um, first of all, they are sure, even though that Mary is, you know, they're getting older and Mary is not feeling great, they never, ever, ever want to go to a nursing home. Um, and once again, that may be that they'll be able to avoid that. But the other thing is that they think that they really don't ever want to go to assisted living. Uh, where they really want to do is they want to stay home. Uh, they want to die and be buried in the backyard. And after they die, they want everything to be divided between the three kids. So as I discussed at, when I was at one of the Salt Marsh presentations, it may be that there is a certain point where Frank and Mary um, really need to be in an assisted living. The main reason being that it's a much safer place to be. While clearly they would always prefer to be at home, it may be that there gets to be a point where because of dangers of falling, because of dangers of any number of things happening at home, they really need to be in a different kind of environment. Now, that environment, if it is in Nantucket, is pretty much Sherbin Commons. Uh, and so uh, I, asked, I was asking Chuck to talk about Sherbin Commons a little bit, just to talk about some of the highlights of it. And then he's going to mention the cost of it. And then I'm going to come back and talk about really several, about how to think out those costs and ways in which perhaps those costs can be taken care of. Chuck? Thank you, Art. Which button do I? And that's going forward, and that's going backwards. Okay, right. good. Thank you. <clears throat> so, assisted living um, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is very specific. Assisted living is a social residential model. It is not a medical model. In other words, if you're, if you, you've gotten to the point in your life that what you really need is skilled nursing help, then you need to go to a skilled nursing facility like on Nantucket, that would be our island home. If you just need some help with daily living, with aspects of daily living, then assisted living would be more appropriate for you. What are we talking about? We're talking about things like help 
with medication, remembering to take it at the right time, remembering what to take in the morning, remembering what to take at night, help in the shower, help getting dressed, help transferring, those types of things are the type of thing we're talking about when we talk about assisted living. You're still, the, the, the desire here is to stay as independent as you possibly can, and sometimes you get to a point in your life where that still means you need a little bit of help. And that's what assisted living is about. Um, that's what it provides. It provides a safe, a safe place for you to be, um, or for you to live. The other thing is that you might live, you might be getting to a point where going up and down the stairs to uh, get to the bedroom is more and more difficult. And a place like Sherburn Commons or in most all assisted living facilities have facilities that are more accessible. They're easier to get in and out of. The, you don't have a tub to climb in and out of to take a shower. It's a more accessible type of facility. So it's safer for you it's a, and it's a, um, it's, a new kind of, it's a new kind of home, a new kind of living situation. Um, as it says, it's almost, the, the food um, here is actually outstanding, um, and assisted living also provides do you, do you cook that, three that meals food? a day. I do not. We have a chef who actually right. cooks that, who uh, does a wonderful job. He cooked uh, before coming here. He was at Chipino's, and he was also out at the, the new golf club. So um, the food is actually excellent. We have a lot of people who love to, to come here and eat. Um, but assisted living does include three meals a day, which is nice. Um, we have a lot of activities available, uh, something going on almost every single day, everything from a, a very competitive bingo game on, uh, on Monday afternoons to uh, films on w Wednesdays and on the weekends. We have uh, an art class that meets. We have uh, book groups that meet here. We have churches who come in and provide services here. We have all kinds of different things. We do pub night once a week. So there are all kinds, we try to make it as interesting and as different as possible. We have a, a culinary class that meets every Wednesday at noon and they'll cook a meal and then everybody will come in and have, have lunch together on Wednesday. So, I mean, again, we try to keep it as varied as possible and keep it as interesting as possible. And you can join or not join, it's up to you. Some people come to some of the events and some people, uh, you know, don't. But it's, it, they're always available and they're always there. Um, again, we provide the assistance with daily living, as I was talking about before, and each individual who comes into an assisted living facility, whether it's Sherburne Commons or someplace uh, on the mainland, gets an individualized service plan. That plan is built specifically for that individual, for their needs, um, and so no two are necessarily alike, because what I might need and what you might need uh, will, will very often be different. That's also a living document. So as time goes on and as conditions change or whatnot, then, then the plan continues to change to provide the assistance and the help that people need so that they can, again, be safe and have a, have a, have a good as, and, and as independent a life as possible. So what does all this cost? Well, we, again, here at Sherburn Commons, we have one bedroom and two bedroom apartments in uh, assisted living. And the one bedrooms are uh, in the $5,500 a month range, and the two bedrooms are $6,600 a month. Now, understand that included in that rental price are all the utilities, three meals a day, an hour's service every day. So those, that time providing those assistance to daily living activities, those are, that's included, and that, again, can be broken down into increments of an hour. It doesn't have to be, once you start, it doesn't count as a whole hour. Um, uh, utilities, uh, hour service, all the activities are included in that. Um, so, I mean, it's sort of an all-inclusive amount um, to cover, you know, to cover the cost each month. Chuck, are there any other, are there any add-ons? Are there any things that they can get here in addition to that package that would be additional, an additional cost? Well, yeah, I mean, if, if people wanted to come in and have meals, uh, had guests to meals, that then can be, uh, that can be done, but that's an additional cost. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. If we do your laundry for you, for example, that might be an additional cost. If you were going in, if you needed more than one hour a day, that could also be an additional cost. But again, that would be provided in increments of, of <coughs> leading up to an hour. In other words, 15-minute increments. If you needed, you know, a little extra help for a period of time, 
uh, you know, get, getting up in the morning, getting started, getting your medication, that kind of thing, and maybe you need a little more time, yeah. you, can, you can pick those up as add-ons. That's great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That, that, so that's kind of a summary. And, 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 and I know we get to this page and, us, and so many people just go, oh, that's mm. just way too much money. And so I want to talk about that a little bit.